Hello guys, the Blue Wizards mod for Battle for Middle Earth 1 got a recent update and today we're gonna take a look into that. First thing first, in order to play this mod you have to first of all download and install the Battle for Middle Earth 1 and also enable the patch 1.06. Once you've done that, you go on this website, the link for that is gonna be in the description down below and click on Downloads Now. It's an .exe file, left click on it and it's gonna start the installation. Now you have a file which is gonna be called Blue Wizards mod, double click on it, it's gonna ask for permission, you have a black screen now. And here, which is the beautiful part about it, is you have a chance to activate or enable the developer mod and also the widescreen maps. It's gonna be unchecked from the beginning, so you have to manually check it. And you go on start game right after. Launch PFME, let's get it started. And by the way, if you don't know what the mod is, it is adding two new factions to battle for Middle Earth 1. Moria, but also Lothlorien. And also, you know, a bunch of new heroes and units, which is pretty nice. You're gonna go on Skirmish for this one, solo play, Skirmish. You're gonna choose the Moria faction and also play against Gondor. Let's get it started on the beautiful map Forts of Eisen, which is the most popular map in all Battle for Middle Earth games slash mods. Look at our resources and our command points. <laughs> we have unlimited guys, unlimited. So for that one, we're gonna just recruit some units. We don't have to build any resource buildings. We're gonna make two uh, goblin layers, two work layers, recruit all the heroes, make two, make armory, and also two troll layers, and actually one more goblin cave. We have to spam a lot of units on this one, guys. Trust me. We're gonna make a lot of archers first. Okay, let's make some works. Let's recruit some works from this one. Let's go for this upgrade. And let's get some trolls as well. And also we can buy all... No, that's a wrong building actually. We have to build the armory. Which is this one, okay. Now we have all the heroes on the field. And also our enemy is gonna spam a lot of units. And we're gonna take a look into the power points once we have enough to get them all picked. We don't need that early on. Okay, we have all the heroes now on the field. Get all the upgrades as well from the armory. Like again, we have unlimited amount of resources. Okay. It's more, more, more. <laughs> this why not? Gets more, more, more. Okay, we can also get some more work riders from this one. We can also go for the upgrade on the goblin layer. That's gonna give us the chance to get some spider links on the field, guys. Beautiful. Now we have all the units we need, and we can go for the attack. And you are you will be surprised about how many units our opponent will have on the field as well. He has rangers already, power guards, everything, you know? Okay, we're gonna also build some towers because there is a chance he might attack us attack us from the side lane, so we will be prepared for this one. We can also buy all the upgrades on our units now. Starting with heavy armor, the other ones are still going. Uh, give fire upgrade to this archer so they have more DPS. And let's keep moving forward. He's gonna use the uh, uh, Elven Wood defensively. We will get the chance to cover this one actually now with the Tainted Land. Let's do this one. Beautiful. Our heroes, we have a lot of them on the field, guys. We're gonna take a look into them as well once we have some level, so we can also go over the abilities from the heroes. Let's keep recruiting more and more units. So we have, I mean, we have unlimited command points almost. We have 3,000 command points, so we can spam a lot of units. And we will eventually never run out of resources anyway. So I think that's good because that's gonna give you the chance to play against hard. PC. In Battle for Middle Earth 1 it was always way too easy, now it's gonna be much more challenging. I think being able to beat 7 factions at once is not gonna be possible anymore, because it's so much harder. They will also spam units all the time. It's building up some towers, we have no siege right now. I'm actually lying because this guy can actually siege if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he can siege. This is a troll hero guys, his name is Rofok, he's from the, from the north. You know, as you know, as you have seen in Game of Thrones, North remembers. North remembers. He's actually dealing a lot of damage and has a crazy amount of attack speed. He's murdering those towers in seconds, guys. I like it. Gonna break one part of the wall. He's also getting experience from killing walls, which is really nice. I like it. Look how many units we have on the field. That's crazy, right? <laughs> I like it, though. Okay. Uh, let's upgrade our war packs as well. Our Work Riders next with all the upgrades. We have also the whole ability, which is similar to the Work Riders from Isengard faction. 
We have Polk, you know this guy from the Hobbits movies. We have Shelob, you know this guy from the Return of the King. The Lord of the Rings, obviously. We have Rothrock. I've not seen this guy in the movie so far. And we have also Cruel. Cruel. Cruel? Cruel? I don't know how to pronounce this name. Captain of Gonzo. He's using the Horn of Gonzo. <laughs> okay. Actually, we are not able... Let's break the gate. We have also Shelob. I mean, she's amazing hero. I like her. She's also existing in Battle for Middle-earth 2 slash Rise of the Witch King. Same to this Mountain Giants. But you can see yourself, it adds to, you know, much more units to this, to Battle for Middle-earth 1. And two new uh, factions. Because as you know, in normal BFMU 1, there are only four factions. Gondor, Rohan, Isengard and Mordor. Now you have also with these existing factions. There's a giant eagle also. You have this, you know, with existing fac <clears throat> factions like with the Gondor, for example, you can also recruit many more units. Or heroes. Look at this hero. This is uh, King of the Dead. Uh, from the movies. Look at this. <laughs> it's pretty dope, so it's actually fun. Again, you can download that and try that out yourself. The gate is actually quite tanky. Takes way more shots than I was expecting. The leader of the army of the dead is actually killing our mountain giants. He's, he's dying though. Okay, he's dying. But he was extremely tanky. He was tanking a lot of units for a long time. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep fighting here. Philop has been taken down though. That's unfortunate. So we can we can re revive her. But you can see this guy is already sieging with Gondonites, has units everywhere. He was using the human wood or elven wood. We're gonna cover this one. We can also recruit some more units, like work riders, for example. We get some more archers on the field. And I like this ill trolls and this half troll pikemen. I like them a lot. Our points are rising, and Golem is also special here, because you know Golem already... Oh, that is Gandalf, guys. That is Gandalf the White. Uh, Gandalf the Grey, actually. The picture is wrong. Golem is a powerful hero in uh, Moria, unlike in Mordor from normal battle for Middle of One, because you have abilities now. You can actually heal with this Smeagol the Good. <laughs> then you have with level 5, Golem the Bad. I mean, Smeagol is good, Golem is bad, we already know that. This one is gonna decrease the movement speed from the targeted enemy units. By 25%. Um, this dude is already level 6. Hunt them down. Okay, let's use this one. It's gonna give us more damage and armor. Beautiful. And we have also with Smeagol. Oh, there is one hero going down. With Smeagol also with level 7, which is Wish for the Precious. Plus 600% more damage, plus 50% more armor, and plus 25% more attack speed. <laughs> Can you imagine a Golem who will be able to 1v1 an Aragorn? That would be dope. The eagle is healing up over time. This guy has to be careful. This one is going to increase our armor by 500% guys. I mean, he's going to be pretty much invincible when this one is active. And it's reloading quite fast as well. Okay, but we have to... Look how many cutters this guy is spamming on us. That's crazy. Okay, we're going to keep these heroes here. Just to, you know, hold the gate. Hold this area. We have also some units, I want to send them actually to the top side of the map because our opponent is going to attack us from multiple sides at once. And I like the fact that this, you know, this hard PC is also using trebuchets. Like he's spamming trebuchets like crazy. I don't want to lose both. We are rising the power points, guys. We've already 24 power points collected. Gandalf is now on his horse. He is now level 3 and that's kind of random because normally you can't get him mounted until he's level 5. I'm curious, he's using also abilities. Look, he's, this guy, he's, he knows what he's doing, guys. He's also being careful, I like that. That's much more challenging now. What is this one, actually? Signal Fire, I think it's a it's a ability from the Spellbook of Gonzo. Gandalf is gonna be taken down, though. Gandalf is dead. Rofok is now level 7, this is our troll hero. Uh, he has now tough armor, it's a passive, which is gonna increase his resistance. He's also summoning rangers. Kill this area as soon as possible. Okay, our hero is back. We have lost another hero, unfortunately. And now we can take a look into the power points. So, let's start with the first one, Cave Pads. It's gonna be um, a revealing ability, reveals a shroud and detects stealth units. This one is gonna be the Defile, which is gonna decrease the production speed from the selected structure by 50% and also the armor. It can be used also on your own unit, on, on your own buildings, by the way. Which I wouldn't uh, recommend you to do. Why would you do that? <laughs> that wouldn't make any sense. Then you have the Swarm. 
Goblins can be recruited from outer mines, so you can obviously have mines around the map. That's for example get by this mine here, which is gonna be your resource building, and with this ability, you can recruit also goblins from these buildings, from these settlements. So it's gonna be something like the like the Rohan faction, because Rohan is also able to recruit peasants from the farms outside. Oh, you can't. Oh, you can okay. You can actually. You can recruit them. And because it's a developer mod, we have incredible amount of production speed. The units are coming out pretty much the second you are clicking on them. Okay. We need to definitely keep making more units. Let's make some... Let's make a goblin army, shall we, guys? Let's make a big goblin army. Let's also keep taking a look uh, into that. We have Tainted Land, which is something we already know. It's gonna nullify the leadership from the, from the enemy units. It's gonna increase our armor. Scavenger, we already know as well. Then you have to summon a lone mine. Summons a lone mine, maximum of two lone mines at the same time. We can actually take a look into that as well. Let's do that here. This one is gonna... Yeah, this one is gonna... Give us money, I think. Yeah, it's gonna give us money. Okay, beautiful. Then we have... Uh, Dwarven Treasures. And uh, Summon Barrow Whites. We're gonna take a look into these first. I mean, this one is gonna be a passive, I guess. Let me check. Let me check this one. No, it's actually summoning resources on the ground. Like from creeping the goblin layer or the work layer or the troll layer, for example. We have to be careful now because he's attacking us. Actually, we lost every unit. We have to recruit our heroes back on the field. Chilop and also this guy. We're gonna move forward with these units. We're gonna lose this fight as well. You can see your opponent is also spamming a lot of units. It's actually way harder than I was expecting it to be. Okay, the other one is summon whites, so we can summon them now on top of the enemy units. Whites, I already know them from Battle for Middle Earth to Rise of the Witch King, guys. Attack, maybe? Yes, a lot of ranges on the field, so we have to be extremely careful. Maybe War Riders are the way to go. They also look different here. All ability can be used to charge. Beautiful. We have to definitely keep more, keep making more and more units. Very, very important. Gilop is level 5 now. And yeah, now we have also uh, Shadow and Flame unlocks Darin Spin. I think that's gonna give us now the chance to get Balrog from the Fortress. 8,000 he costs, but money is not a problem. Oh, wait a second, that's a, that's the wrong button. We have also Summon the Watcher, Darkness, and last but not least, Earthquake. Okay, I want to summon the Watcher actually, right there, let's see. Oh, the Watcher is coming in clutch, I like it. This is from Battle for Middle Earth to Rise of the Witch King, but, you know, you can remember the Watcher probably from the first movie, The Fellowship of the Ring. I was always sad that this is not existing in BFME 1. Like, for example, there are some abilities which are pretty similar to Isengard and Mordor. And you could make a difference by actually adding the Watcher, for example, as a summon to the evil factions. Because the only summon the evil factions have in BFME 1 are, is the Balrog. From both, like Isengard and also Mordor. Okay, so we are in a good spot. We're gonna make some more Goblin Caves here. Goblin Lair, Goblin Lair. And the shortcut for that is L, by the way. Let's try to use this one and remember this one. You can also set waypoints so they can move to the selected area the second they come out. And then we have Darkness. Darkness is gonna give us leadership, 40% uh, damage and 20% more armor for the uh, for all the allied units in the entire map. And last but not least, we have the Earthquake. So we can try. Uh, it's a small area actually. Okay, you can actually move with that one. Oh, that's cr that looks nice. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Look at this. Look at the animation. Look at the ground guys from the Gondor base. Looks dope to me. I like it. Let's see how effective this is going to be. I mean, this is not going to last very long. It's going down very, very slow. And you can't kill the buildings in time, but I think it's going to be much more effective against the build against the units. Okay, let's give them also fire upgrades. And we can, during all this time, also take a look into... Uh, first of all, let's move from this side. Oh, we have to be careful. The eagles are being summoned. They are going to try to kill our fortress, unfortunately. Let's take a look into the buildings as well, shall we? Balrog is, by the way, on the field. We're going to focus on him. He's level 1. He's going to be permanently under your control until he dies. Okay, so for the, product, for, the, uh, for the production buildings in the Blue Wizards mod, as the Moria faction, we have Goblin Layers. 
You can recruit goblin warriors, goblin archers, but also spider links from this one with level 2. And also purchase the banner carrier upgrade from this structure. Then you have the work layer, which is going to give you the chance to get wild works and work riders. Then you have the armory, which you can now with this, I think, with this one, the swarm, you can also recruit goblin warriors from this building. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Then you have the troll layer. This is going to be a special layer, which is going to give you the chance to get some normal trolls on the field. Like from the cave troll layer from Battle for Middle Earth 1 or any Battle for Middle Earth game pretty much. You can also, you know, use rocks, trees and also find the orc to hold. That's not something, that's something different from the Mordo mountain trolls. They are able to eat the orc. This one is going to be able to throw the orc guys. Then you have the half troll pikemen. These are the units we have seen before. These are this ones for example. Then you have also these trolls which are the heal trolls. I think they are pretty similar to the cave trolls, if I'm not mistaken. Infantry cavalry structures. Uh, infantry cavalry structures. I think, yeah. I think this is like an elite troll. Who will be stronger. But you can only fight with the with the tree in his hands. Okay? And then, you have also the mountain giants. Mountain giants, I know them from BFME 2 slash Rise of the Witch King. They are gonna be the siege weapons from the Moria faction. We have a lot of units on the field actually guys, that's crazy. Uh, we have a lot of goblins on the field as well. Now we have all the abilities unlocked. And now we can take a look uh, into our heroes. So we're gonna group them all together around this side. Also revive our Shiloh because she was taken down before. I mean Balrog is obvious, he is gonna be the same Balrog like from the Summon of Isengard and Mordor. But he's coming on the field with level 1. Which means he has Ignite, Fire Whip and the Scream ability available but the Wings and the Breathfire is going to be available once he hits level 4 or level 8. Um, the first hero we're going to take a look into is Bulk. I believe he was the son from Azok. Uh, powerful Urukai, you know, Urukai Goblin hero. Looks like this. Uh, you have uh, the ability Crippling Strike, which is going to pin an enemy hero. I think similar to the Cripple from Lourdes. You can also get mounted uh, on his work. Then you have Hunt Them Down, which is going to be a ability for him and also for the allied units around him. 20% uh, damage, armor and also 10% more movement speed, which is nice. You have the Tenacity, which is going to increase his armor by 500%. And once you have him level 8, you can also uh, summon an army of goblins and half trolls. Actually, we're going to take a look into that because he's almost level 8. So let's try to get this ability unlocked first. Let's use darkness. Okay. <clears throat> He's coming now. We're gonna use the tenacity for this one because I don't want to take too much damage. He's gonna be very, very powerful, I believe. We can also use this one. He's level 8 now. Okay, he is summoning it instantly around him. And it looks like those units are gonna remain on the field until they die. Because normally the abilities you are able to summon with any units or heroes, they're gonna remain on the field for a short period of time. But this unit, you can even up buy upgrades on them. That's crazy. I like it. So that's Bulk, okay? Next one on the list is gonna be Cruel. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this name though. He's like a goblin hero. It looks like it. Yeah, he's a goblin hero. Looks like a goblin as well. Nothing too special about him. He has a throw spear. I think it's similar to the Eomia's spear throw ability. You have Carnage, which is gonna be similar to the Carnage from Lourdes. Once you have him level 5, he's gonna have leadership for the allied units around him. With level 6, he's gonna be able to give experience to the selected allied units. And with level 8, Call from the Deep, he's gonna increase the production speed from Moria Goblin Layers. I think it's similar to the Call the Horde from the Moro faction, to get the units on the field faster. But we don't need right now because we are getting them on the field really fast anyway. Because of the developer mod. The next one on the list is Gollum. I mean, we already spoke about him. Uh, he has with level 7 Wish for the Precious. I actually want to unlock this one, guys. Let me try to get him level 7, I want to see. And I want to try to find a hero that I can fight against. From the Gondor faction here. But what's happening? Attack them, maybe? Don't sleep. Alright, so... We can... I mean, I don't know. I'm scared because he's quite squishy. He has 300 HP only. He's gonna die extremely fast. Once they target him, I think. 
But we can also heal him, I guess. Be fine. They are not attacking him just yet. He's level 7, okay. So I'm gonna try to find a hero now. <laughs> I hope I'm not gonna die by the time. He's gonna be extremely squishy, right? So it, he's not about surviving, I think he's about dealing damage. Okay, that is the army of... Oh, 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 okay, he's dead. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> All right, I need, I need to revive him, though. I want to fight with him against the king of dead. That's what I want to do. Ignore everything here. Just die to the tower guards. The king of dead, though, he's murdering us, I guess. Oh, there is also another hero. This is Isildur, right? Yeah, Isildur is on the field. And the, the leader of the dead is also on the field. That's crazy. Attack them. Actually, move to this side. We can keep making more units now. Rally point. Okay. Also, you guys can now move forward. And also, you guys have to attack now. And don't watch them killing you all the time. That's the one thing I'm getting annoyed the most. That they are not able to automatically attack, attack themselves. Okay, Gollum is moving forward. Now, let's see what we can do with this guy. I want to see the damage output against a hero, ideally. Let's try to kill Isildur, shall we? Don't attack him, guys. Don't attack him. I want to kill him. But is he? He's there, okay. Let's see. I'm using the ability now. We're just going to increase our damage by 600%. He's still dealing zero damage. <laughs> he's still dealing zero damage, but he's level 10 now, okay. I mean, you know, 600% sounds like crazy, but I think when you have a really low attack damage... The percentage of that one is not going to increase that too much in terms of actual stats power, you know? Okay, next on the list is Rofok. This is a troll hero. Um, now he has all the abilities unlocked. We're going to take a look into this one. This is a passive. This one is... Yeah, I mean, it's like the Elendil from Aragon, I'm assuming. And this one is leadership. This one is going to give him the chance to throw rocks instead of fighting with the, with the fists. Okay. Next one on the list is Balrog, Turin Spain. I mean, he's obvious, I don't want to talk too much about him. Chilov is the next one on the list. We have Poison Stinger, which is going to deal damage and slows down the enemy hero. This one is going to be... Uh, you can summon Spiderlings around her, I guess. Let me take a look into that one. You can use Darkness to get rid of the Cloud Break. Yeah, you are able to summon Spiderlings and they're going to also stay on the field permanently. Okay. So I'm going to move now with this Troll forward in order to use this... Earth Shatterer ability against the units here. Let's see. We can also right click so he can charge. He will be faster. I want to be able to hit as many units as possible. I'm going to actually try to get inside. Okay, let's use it now, guys. Let's use it now. Ooh, actually it one-shots everything. Almost everything. They are taking a lot of damage at least. But she's going to die now. He's going to die now, unfortunately. Right? He's dead, yeah. Unfortunately, he's very squishy, though. He's very squishy, so he's dying quite fast. Okay, Shirob has uh, Instill Terror, Giant Spider Weep. This is gonna... Oh, I like this, though. It looks nice. This is gonna... Um, make the enemy units suffer minus 30% movement speed, minus 10% armor for a short time. So they're gonna be slowed down big time. Which is gonna give you either the ability to escape with Shirob or engage and try to slow them down. With level um, 8, you have the tunnel. Take to the location. Location, Okay, so it's pretty nice. So I think it's unlimited range, if I'm not mistaken. You can be pretty much everywhere on the map in a second. Beautiful. Actually, we are losing the fights now. And now it's the time with the Balrog for us to shine. I want to be active now with Balrog. He's dead, unfortunately. Let's make some more units. We have some defense. Okay. Balrog should be extremely tanky, if I'm not mistaken, against normal units. Unless he changed this one. Uh, we shall see. It feels like... I feel like he is gonna be extremely tanky, but we're gonna find out now. I'm pretty sure that these units are not gonna be able to deal damage to us. While we are one-shotting them by trampling over them. I mean, he costs 8,000, so he's pretty expensive, right? I'm actually curious if Isidur or the King of Dead can damage him big time. We shall see this one. Level 8 is going to be the time with the Breath Fire. Keep that in mind. So we need to have some levels first. And move now to this side. We are losing this area though, unfortunately. But keep an eye on Balrog. I'm actually curious of our damage against 
uh, heroes. Like we can now use the fire whip against Faramir. He's already level 10, so he should be tanky. Doesn't deal too much damage. I was expecting to one-shot him. But he's level four on he's level six now immediately after killing Faramir. He can kill this one as well. What is what does this do actually? I don't know. Uh, signifier. He's level seven. He's leveling up very fast. Extremely fast, actually. We can also fly inside. And now we are level eight. Okay. Oh, what, what, what was that? <laughs> Did you guys see that one? That's crazy. What? Okay, so I'm gonna definitely use the Watcher here. Uh, Watcher, where can I use you? There we go. Ooh, Gunsalf, level 8. Using abilities and killing my units just like that. The Wings ability have a, has a long cooldown, like an extremely long cooldown. I'm gonna use this ability, I think. I hope I will be able to break the wall. Yeah, I can, okay. Now I can. It damages the wall, yeah. It damages the wall every couple of seconds. You deal a burst damage to the wall. And also to the, to the allied units around here as well. You knock them up at least, or you knock them back at least. Okay, use Ignite for the damage boost. 200% increased damage. We should be able to two-shot the Citadel at least. Maybe even one-shot it, we shall see. Yeah, it's almost gonna be one-shotable, so we can also move. In those kind of situations, Balrog is dealing damage in the area around him, so you don't have to shoot, you know, attack one more time. Red fire animation can be cancelled. Once you, once you see the animation like this, you can already start moving. Because normally, I mean, this Balrog is going to remain on the field permanently, right? And he's going to be very hard to be taken down. But the normal Balrog from the Isengard slash Moto faction, which you are able to summon, is not going to remain on the field extremely long. Actually, I want to kill this guy. Can I kill this King of Death with, with Balrog? I should be able to, right? You shall see this one. Actually, we are not dealing too much damage to him. But we are taking, for some reason, a lot of damage from somebody now as Balrog, all of a sudden. Use Fire Whip. Can I click on him, though, please? Okay, I can click now. That should be enough. Level 10 unlocked. And also, Breathfire has an extremely long cooldown. Which makes sense, because he is going to be on the field permanently. Boromir is using something here. He is... I don't know what it is. But he was red for a second. And now we have only one outpost to kill, if I'm not mistaken. But during all this time, we have lost every unit around this area. He's actually spamming a lot of tower guards. So we can try to counter that by spamming a lot of goblins. And make some of these. I want to actually make an army of these units here. Okay, Balrog is still alive, so... He can buy the space back, though. And I don't want to risk that one. I want to actually defeat him now. Okay, so let's move forward. And to pass it from Shilob, I forgot to mention this one. She is the only hero that is able to move over the seas. Look at this now, guys. Come on. Do you see that? That's nice. I like it. And when you are running away from the opponent units, for example, and if they are chasing you down, you can always try to go to the other side and press S on your keyboard. Now she's underwater. She's taking a bath, you know? She's like swimming. <laughs> Balrog is just tanking everything, guys. Balrog is just tanking everything. He is extremely tanky. I can't tell you if you get if we already were able to kill, um, if we are already able to kill Gunsalf because I can't see him on the field anymore. Let's build this one. Just why not? We can also rebuild the Citadel. Okay, we can now buy this base and move with everything what we got to the top side. Gandalf is still alive. He's almost level 10. Level 9, I mean. Can we kill this guy? Zaplas knocking us up. He's also very tanky. Level 9 now. Level 10 is going to unlock his Word of Power. I think he's pretty similar to the original one because you can't make Gandalf much stronger than he already is. In BFM 1, he's already extremely powerful. If you're wondering why we get so much money, it's because of the Scavenger, which is a passive ability. It's going to give us money all the time. Army of the Dead was used, actually, from the Gonzo player. Okay, I see you, I see you. I see what you're trying to do. These trolls are extremely powerful, guys. Extremely powerful. I like it. Okay, so Eagle is gonna go down next. Where is our Balrog, though? Oh, he's still here. I'm actually wondering how long the range is to fly. I had obviously not that long. Okay, makes sense. 
Let's build some buildings just to not have an empty base for no reason. Okay. Let's recruit some of those trolls again. Half trolls, half trolls, what I mean? Half troll pikemen, they are called. Mountain giants are looking like this. You are able to fight with the rocks. They are the siege weapons from this faction, obviously. Balrog has the. He, he was here pretty fast, actually, okay. Okay, so. I'm gonna talk about the Breathfire reset once again. So you pretty much use it. Once you see him using it, guys, you can now start moving. You see, it still deals damage. And you don't have to wait until the animation ends, if you know what I mean. And the hard open end is gonna be defeated. The victory is ours. <laughs> Good job, Shanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, guys, that was it from the Blue Wizards mod update. I think it's a great thing to do. You can also play it on multiplayer with game range application, obviously. Thank you guys so much for watching. I see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Holy moly, guys. We have killed so many units. Look at this. Like, we have lost also a lot of units. We actually lost more than we killed. Okay. I see you next time. Take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.